guys, today we've got three examples on cables under distributed loads. The good news is that we've already learned a few things that will help us out. If you get a formula sheet for your test, these will probably be on it. And if you get to make your own crib sheet, make sure you add them. We've got our general shape equation and two equations for a cable under uniform load with a zero slope at the origin. One for the horizontal tension and one for the max tension. Then we've got the relationships between the slope and angle of our cable and the total and horizontal tension components. To help you learn better, I would recommend trying the problems first and then watching the solutions. Okay, here's our first problem. We've got a cable system with uniform load and it is symmetric. We know our cable span, our cable sag, and the uniform load. We're asked to find our maximum and minimum tensions. These are the perfect conditions for us to use the formulas that we worked so hard on solving for last time. We know the tension varies along the length of the cable with the slope. And we know that the maximum happens near the support where it's steepest. So we get to use this formula. What about the minimum? Well, if the tension increases as the slope increases, that means it must also be the lowest where we have our smallest slope. At our origin, we have a slope of zero, which means that our tension is acting solely in the horizontal direction. That means we can use this handy dandy formula to find our minimum tension. And since we know all these constants, all we have to do is some plug and play. We can plug in our knowns and solve for our max and min tension. That was fast, right? Almost makes all that work in the last video seem worth it. Here's question two. The cable system in this problem is similar to our last problem, except we don't have uniform loading and we have a support at the bottom where our cable slope is zero. We're asked to find the shape equation for our cable and also the maximum tension. The first thing we want to do is find our shape equation, which means we need to integrate. But what are we integrating? We need a function for our loading. We have a load on our cable system that increases linearly from 0 to 80 kilonewtons per meter over a distance of 16 meters. That simplifies to a loading function of 5x, which is what we will integrate. Now we want to solve for our constants C1 and C2. To get C2, we can use our shape equation and our boundary condition at the origin. All we have to do is plug in our values of x and y equal 0 and solve, which tells us that C2 is equal to 0. Another nice boundary condition again comes from our origin, but this time using our slope equation. Our slope is the first derivative of our shape equation. At the origin, we have a slope of zero, and we have an x value that is also zero, which means our slope is simplified to one over our horizontal tension times our constant. And from that, we know that C1 must equal zero. Now we found C1 and C2 are both zero. So we're pretty close to our final shape equation, but we're still missing our horizontal tension TH. Now using this equation, is there any point on our system that we have known values for both our y and x? 
Well, how about at the end? We know that our x is equal to 16 and our y is equal to 10. So we can plug those values into this equation. Then rearrange this and solve for th, which will give us a nice answer of 341 kilonewtons. Now all that's left to do is take this th and put it into this equation. Once you do that and simplify, you'll get a nice final shape equation of 5 over 2048 times x to the power of 3. Part B of our question asks us to find the maximum tension in our cable. We know that the tension is its maximum where the slope and angle of our cable are also their maximum. In our system, that happens right at the support. And we know that the slope and the angle are related through this relationship. And since dy over dx is just our first derivative, that means So where we have our maximum theta is at the end, where we have an x value of 16. So we can use this relationship to solve for our max theta. Now we found our maximum theta, and in the last step of our problem, we found our horizontal tension th. So we can just plug and play. And we get that to the nearest kilonewton, our maximum tension is 725. For our last example, we have a section of cable suspended between two points. It has a span of 400 feet and a uniform load of 80 pounds per foot. At support B, the cable makes an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. We're told that the maximum tension in the cable is 115,000 pounds. What is the height of the cable system H? At first, this problem is kind of intimidating, but we're just gonna work with the relationships we already know. We'll find our shape equation, determine our constants, find our horizontal tension, and then use our shape equation to find our h. The first thing we want to do is define our coordinate system. There's no rule that says x always has to go that way. Next, we can find our shape equation by integrating twice using our uniform load of 80 pounds per foot. Now we can use this equation and a boundary condition at our origin to help us solve C2. Because at our origin, x is equal to 0 and y is also equal to 0. Which means that C2 must also be 0. To find our remaining constant C1, I've started by already taking the derivative of our shape equation. Remember, the derivative is just equal to our slope, which is equal to the tangent of the angle our cable makes. We can use this equation and a boundary condition at the origin to help us find C1, because we know the angle that our cable is making at the origin. 30 degrees. And because this is a nice angle, we can use a special triangle to make this a little simpler. Because geometry is super neat, there's this cool triangle with 30 degrees that we can use to simplify tan 30 to a nice fraction of 1 over root 3. And 
we get that C1 must be equal to our horizontal tension over root 3. We can take that C1 that we solved for and plug it into our equation for y prime. Now, at this point in our problem, we may start to think that we're stuck. But there was one more piece of information in our problem statement that we haven't used yet. Our maximum tension in the cable is equal to 115,000 pounds. So how can we use that? Where does this maximum tension happen? It happens right near our support A, where the cable angle and cable slope are also their maximum. This is where x is equal to 400 feet in our coordinate system. So where our angle is its maximum, which happens at x equals 400 feet, our slope will also be its maximum. And now, I mean, how neat is this? Remember, tangents come from triangles, and a tangent just means opposite over adjacent. So we can fill in this triangle from this. Because if you look at this triangle and you take the tan of theta, you will get this over this which we got way up here. Now, using this beautiful right triangle, we can call upon our good friend Pythagoras. We use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for th. Even pretty simple scientific calculators often come with quadratic solver functions, which will help you crush this out pretty quickly. Or you could always kick it old school and dust off your quadratic formula. But any way you slice it, you'll find out that the horizontal component of our tension is around 82,801.5 pounds. At this point, from our original shape equation, we've found both our constants and our horizontal tension th. That means we're ready to use this equation to find our elusive h. From our system, we know that when our x value is equal to 400 feet, our y value must be equal to h. So we can plug these into our equation and solve. And we get that the elusive h to the nearest foot is equal to 308. That was tons of fun, right? Well, thanks for sticking through it all the way to the end. And don't forget to come back next time to learn all about cables under their own self-weight.